problem number 16, uh, we have a typical type of long problem where we have a function that's giving us position of a particle, and we're asked numerous questions about that. So we need, so this is a common type of question where you'd be asked to do things about average velocity, instantaneous velocity, um, coming to a stop, things like that. So here's our function f of t. t is measured in seconds, and even if it doesn't say it specifically in this type of problem, it's assumed that t has to be zero or greater. We're talking about a time zero where we start and on from there, so t can't be negative here. So for part A, we're asked to find the particle's average rate of change from 2 to 4 seconds. So remember that an average rate of change, or an average velocity, is always just finding the slope from one point to the next. So what we need here is to do f of 4 minus f of 2 all over 4 minus 2. So this would be the slope between x equals 2 and x equals 4. And that's exactly what average rate of change or average velocity is. So to solve this, we would just need to plug in that value. So let's see what those are. So if we plug in 4 here, we're going to get 64, 4 cubed. So minus 9 t squared. So t squared would be 4 squared, which is 16. 9 times 16 would be 144. Plus 15 t. 15 times 4 is plus 60, minus 12. So what I just put in parentheses there would be f of 4. And f of 2 would be when we plug in 2 here. So 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4. And minus 9 times 4 would be minus 36. Plus 15 times 2 would be plus 30. And again, minus 12. And that's all divided by 4 minus 2 which is 2. So let's just figure out what those values are. So here we get 124 minus 144 is negative 20 minus 12. So this value is negative 32. And here we get 38 minus 36, which, which would be 2. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. So we get negative 32 minus negative 10. So that gives us negative 32 plus 10, which is negative 22 over 2 which is negative 11. So our average rate of change is negative 11. <clears throat> so part B uh, is now back to being a symbolic question instead of something that we're plugging in, which is find a function for the velocity. Well, if this function gives us the position, the function for velocity is always just the derivative of that. So in this case, v of t, our velocity function, is f prime of t. Is our derivative of our position. So the derivative here would be 3t squared minus 18t plus 15. That's our velocity function, v of t. So I'll circle that here. So you know that's the answer there to part b. Part c said, says, what is the particle's instantaneous rate of change at 2 seconds? So the instantaneous rate of change is just the velocity. So that, in other words, that's the derivative of position. So all we need to do to answer part C is to plug 2 in here. So what is v of 2? Well, that's just plugging 2 right in here. So here we get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 18 times 2 is minus 36. And we get plus 15. So here we get negative 24 plus 15, which is negative 9. So the answer to part C, what is the instantaneous rate of change at 2 seconds? Negative 9. 
So part D now asks us to think a little bit more about what the derivatives actually mean. At which time, or times, does the particle come to a stop? So coming to a stop would mean that its velocity, its instantaneous rate of change at any point, is zero. So this is asking you, where is the velocity zero? So we want our velocity function right here. I'm going to write this part down here. We want this to equal zero, and we're trying to figure out what times solve that equation. Well, what we can do here before we start to solve this is notice that all of those terms have a 3 in common. So we can factor a 3 out. That would give us t squared minus 6t plus 5. So if this is equal to zero, then the part with the variables has to equal to zero. And that's a quadratic that can be solved pretty easily. So this can be factored into two terms. We still have the 3 multiplied out front, although that's not going to affect our answer here. So we need two things that multiply to 5 but add together to be negative 6. The only way we can do that is t minus 5 and t minus 1. So you can see here this factorization is equal to 0, which means that either of these terms could equal 0, which tells us t equals 1 and 5 because that's what makes these terms 0. So if t is equal to 1 or 5, we have our particle is at a complete stop. So that's the answer to part d. And finally, part e says, what is the position at the time the particle first comes to a stop? So it's only at a complete stop at two times, t equals 1 and t equals 5. So the first time it comes to a stop, t equals 1. So this question is asking us, what's the position at t equals 1? Well, we have a function that gives us position. That was given to us in the problem. So the position when t equals 1 is just plug in 1 to the position. So what is f of 1 is what we're being asked. That should be pretty simple here. Just plug that in. So we get 1 minus 9, which would be negative 8, plus 15, which would be 7, minus 12, which would be negative 5. <clears throat> so again, we need to know that velocity is the derivative of position. Velocity and instantaneous rate of change are exchangeable in when your function is talking about a position. And we also need to know that average rate of change is just the slope between two points. So when we plug that into that formula, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that's average rate of change, but if you can think about it, that's still just the slope between two points as well. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.